A warm welcome to each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Richard Bott. I'm moderator of the United Church of Canada. Whether you're able to participate in the live version of this worship service or you're taking part at a later time, I am very glad that we've been able to join in this space to worship together. I'd like to thank uh, both Bruce Harding and Debbie Fingus for offering their gifts of music leadership today. And I'd like to thank Debbie's family as well for joining in, for adding a whole choral feature for us. This worship service is being offered as a support to our communities of faith during the time that it's difficult for people to meet together because of COVID-19. Uh, this worship service is being recorded and will be shared through the United Church of Canada's website in high resolution, low resolution audio and text formats, because we realize that not everyone has access to high speed internet. One announcement. Having explored this with a number of people, I've made the decision to bring this worship service uh, to an end at this time. I don't mean tonight, I mean in general. When we first began this, while there were some congregations sharing their worship services in ways that could easily be accessed by people during this time of COVID-19, there was a need expressed for backup that the team at the General Council Office could offer. We've come to a place where many United Church communities of faith are, are offering worship gatherings in ways that people from all across the United Church can access. So it's time to step back from this weekly service. You can find many of those by going to uh, the Facebook page uh, for the United Church of Canada, and there's a map, an interactive map, that shows many of the live streams. There's also a thread on the moderator's Facebook page uh, where people are posting a number of different options that people have, including uh, download possibilities and text formats and sermons that are being uh, typed up and posted on people's websites. So please, uh, consider checking out some of the other church services that are around for you. I'd like to thank everyone uh, who has participated in the last uh, seven services and also those who are participating in worship tonight. Uh, you, the people who have led worship and those of you who have helped to make the technical part work really well. Thank you for helping this to happen. So again, welcome beloved children of God. As we gather today, I'd like to ask us to take a moment to connect where we are physically to this virtual space that we're in. I'd like to ask you to take a moment to recognize that the space that you are in, and even more than that, the, the land upon which that space sits is important. For 10,000 years and more, there have been people living on this land not just being responsible for the land, but being an integral part of it. This is the traditional territories, and in many places in which we live, unceded territories of the various indigenous peoples of this land. Those of us who are settlers, descendants of settlers and newcomers, need to acknowledge that reality. We need to give thanks for the indigenous peoples care for this land past and present, for their presence here in this place, for the fact that we are able to worship the divine here. So today we celebrate all of the indigenous peoples of this land. And we remember today the elders and others who continue to be deeply devoted to their faith and their relationship with the creator. And we celebrate those who are part of the United Church of Canada. In this time, it is important for all of us to recognize that we continue to live in broken relationship. And so this is a moment to recommit ourselves to working for right relations each and every day. That's what territorial acknowledgement is about. It's more than just pretty words. It's about making a commitment to working for right relations. So today, I joined this virtual space from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. 
on the traditional and unceded territory of the Keitsi, the Kukwetlam, and the Stolo peoples. If you know the peoples of the land upon which you connect to this virtual space, I'd ask you to take a moment to perhaps type those into the chat box. But even if you don't type them in, I'd invite you to take a moment to reflect and to give thanks where you are. If you don't know, when the worship service is done, consider going to native-land.ca. Type in the name of your community and learn a bit more. Thank you. May God bless this reminder and help all of us to be people of truth and right relations. Let's take a moment to breathe, to bring ourselves into this place. In the name of God, the creator, take a deep breath and let it out saying, Alleluia. In the name of God, the Christ, take a deep breath and let it out saying, Alleluia. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit, take a deep breath and let it out saying, Alleluia. One more deep breath in and let it go saying, Amen. With the Spirit of God alive in our hearts, with the breath of life filling our bodies, with the light of Christ warming our lives, let us celebrate this Easter day. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Amen.
as we gather together with one another. We gather from across Canada. We gather not just with each other, we gather with God. And it is important that we greet not just each other, but God. So let's take a moment to join in prayer together in the words that are printed here on our screen. When the Spirit showed up, all of the disciples, long time and new, gathered in community, sharing what they had, celebrating as they ate, and praising you, loving God. Right now, we can only gather like this. But we can share, we can pray, we can celebrate your love present with all creation. Open our hearts to your wonders. Open our minds to your signs. Open our lives to your presence, God of Easter joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, God added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends the lesson from our ancestors. May God speak to us in and through these words. Shall we pray? May the words of our mouths and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. 
O God, our strength. O God, our redeemer. Amen. It's kind of fun for me that this is the scripture passage that comes in the last service in these weekly services that I was planning to do, because it's really one of my absolute favorites. I love it because it talks about how the church came together at the beginning. This passage happens just after the story of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit appeared among the disciples and the people who were gathered around. And people began to understand uh, what the disciples were sharing, the story of the good news of Jesus Christ in their own languages. From that moment on, the, the story went into the world. The Spirit spread in so many different ways. One of the ways that it spread was in the building of this community, this gathering of disciples. Part of what I love about it is that it gives a little bit of a picture, not just of how worship and community life worked then, but maybe some things for us to think about. Everyone who believed came together and they shared what they had one with another. As we go on in the, the book of Acts and in other letters that were written, we find out that, that people would bring things together communally and that they would be shared with the people who had need. The people who gathered realized it didn't matter if you were rich or poor in the household of God. But right now, those who had enough and more than enough needed to share with those who didn't have enough. That people who didn't have folks who took care of them would make sure that there were now this new family, this family of Christ, who would take care of each other. Women who had been widowed, children who no longer had parents, all could find what they needed for their bodies in that place. They spent time together in the temple. They didn't give up the faith that they had grown up with. That was a, a base, a, a starting place, a place that they continued to worship God. And then they came home. They broke bread, they ate together, and they ate together with glad and generous hearts. And in that eating together, they praised God. There's something kind of wonderful about that image, isn't there? In lots of ways, as the church, we've kind of ritualized a whole bunch of things. We've, we've created patterns that we use for doing those things. Many of our meals are at the communion table and we have liturgies to do that, a sort of ritualized format. But when communion started out, it was around a table. It was more like having lunch with Jesus. I wonder in some ways what it's like for us right now. I think those ritual moments are important for us and having structure around them helps us to touch on those things and on those memories the way that we've done them before. But there's something absolutely wonderful about knowing that we can sit down at the table that's in our home with whoever is with us physically or we can invite them into our home on the screen just like we are right now and we can eat together, and we can laugh together, and we can cry together, and we can praise God together. Being a disciple of Jesus had a lot to do about being in community that cared one for another.
It's also about being a community that cares for people from a wider part of the world. As we look past our doors, past our windows, as we look into the world that we are a part of, even though right now many of us are separate from us, we need to take a look at how we live our discipleship, how we build that community of goodness and hope and wonder, how we build the household of God. I think we've got a lot to learn from the Acts Church. I think we've got a lot to learn about prayer together, about serving together, about making a difference, about sharing what we have with those who don't, about realizing that we are all beloved children of God. So, in this time of COVID-19, as the world is trying to figure out what a tiny virus is doing to change so many of our patterns of living, I think it's important that we, that we start thinking about how we want to be different as individuals, as communities of faith, as social structures. How do we want to be kind? How do we want to be caring? How do we want to help each other to be safe? And even more than that, for those of us who are part of this community of disciples of Jesus, how do we want to celebrate what that means in our lives? So I would invite you tonight, tomorrow, whenever, when you sit down at your table and you break bread, give thanks that we're doing it together, even if we're thousands of kilometers apart. Christ's peace be with you. Amen.
as we break bread together, as we drink wine together, as we praise God together, I'd like to invite everyone to take a moment to think about the gifts that God has placed in you and in your life. I'd like to ask you to, to think about those quiet gifts and those loud gifts. I'd like to ask you to think about some way that you would like to use those gifts in the coming week in a, a way that will share your love with God or with your neighbor, that will share your love with yourself. I'd like to ask you to take that gift, take that action and place it here in this plate. As you think about all of the gifts that God has shared with us, what is it that you would like to give God right now? If you'd like to help your congregation financially during this rather chaotic time, but you aren't sure how, I would invite you to be in contact with your minister or the treasurer of your community of faith. As well, every congregation in the United Church of Canada is registered at Canada Helps dot org. You can make an electronic donation through them if you'd like. I also understand that if you'd like to make a donation to Mission and Service, uh, you can do that through the United Church of Canada's national website, united-church.ca. So I'd invite you to take a moment to offer God the gifts in your heart, the actions of care, the resources that can help your neighbors and the world as we sing together. for all the gifts that you have given us, God, for the gifts that we are, for hope and for wonder, for tears and for laughter, for times of solitude and times of companionship, we give you thanks, God of all creation. We know that you have blessed the gifts that you've given, but we ask that you would help us to use them well in ways that bring healing to all your creation. In Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen.
So for the prayers of the people today, I'm wondering, uh, those of you who have a, a, a keyboard in front of you, if you have any requests for prayers, I would invite you to type those in. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are joining us in the recorded time of worship, I'd ask please in the silent time that we'll, we'll build into this, that you offer the prayers that are in your hearts. So let's take a moment to pray. God, you are present in all times and places, and for that we give thanks. We celebrate the communities that you bring together all around the world. Communities that find ways of living hope, of sharing in times of pain and loss, as well as in times of joy and celebration. Today, we remember many different groups, many different places. We remember the people in Fort McMurray, where flooding has pushed people out of their homes. We remember people who are in their homes and have been isolated from others for for quite some time and will be isolated for longer. And we remember especially the elders and seniors who are not able to be with family right now. We pay, pray for people who are in prisons. We pray for those who are in refugee camps. We pray for people who don't have safe home where they can physically distance. And we pray for all who are finding ways to make sure that people have enough to eat, to, to try and make sure that people have safe home. We pray for those in hospital. We remember those especially who are living with some of the harsher realities of COVID-19. And we pray for healing. We pray for those who are going in for surgery, those who are living with cancer. God, we pray for people who are struggling in their homes right now. We know that this time of stress can make uh, issues of mental health even more pronounced. We know that there are homes in which abuse happens. And so we pray for we pray for balance and we pray for safety. We pray for, uh, we pray for parents who are struggling, some with, with not being able to work, some with having to work from home while also making sure that their kids are, are doing the learning that the schools are asking them to do. We, we pray for the we pray for the children who are trying to figure out why they can't go and hang with their friends. We pray for the chaos right now, God. And we ask that you would help us to find ways of bringing healing and hope, some order and some joy into all of this. And even as we do these things, we also, we also say thank you and celebrate so many things. The birth of tiny little babies, the way that the spring rain smells, the connections that we're making. 
And most of all, we thank you for your presence in every moment of our lives. And in these prayers of thanksgiving and hope, we recognize that presence always. And we share in the words that Jesus gave to all of his disciples, including us. Because God, you are like our mother and you are like our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now, friends, let us go in peace. And in all that we do, let us do it for love and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And let us always remember, we are part of that community of Christ's disciples, gathering at tables, breaking bread, celebrating God's presence. And in all of that, we are never alone. The peace of Christ holds us, and the love of God enfolds us, and the wings of the Holy Spirit carry us this day and always. Alleluia. Amen. So, thank you all for joining not just today, but in other weeks that you've been able to be part of these worship services. And again, I would really like to thank Bruce Harding, uh, Bruce and Cheryl for their music today, but also for uh, helping to, to make this music happen as things have gone on. Uh, Debbie, I would like to thank Debbie Fingus, and I would like to thank all of her family who are there very, very much. I don't have anybody else's names, but thank you so much for being our choir, uh, not just this week, but in past weeks as well. It's been wonderful to have your gifts of music, so thank you so much. And I would like to invite any of you who are here to type in words of blessing and hope that you might want to offer before you sign off. Thank you for worshiping together today. Let us go in peace to love and to serve. Thanks be to God.